my last full day here in Japan. It's of course been a really fun experience. I feel like on this trip I pretty much went to all the places I wanted to go to except one place that I missed again because I had a fever in Tokyo. And also that restaurant requires two people to get in. Oh, it's my one regret, but that at least gives me something to look forward to next time I'm back. And right now I'm starving. I just gotta go run an errand and, and then it's food time. And today is gonna be a, a very memorable food day. It will, you'll see. Mmm. Yeah, it's not grape. I bought two of these. One is a grape and one is a tomato on the inside. Mm, this is the tomato one. And might I say, that is one juicy tomato. Hey, look at this. Mmm. Never had a tomato in a mochi before. But it makes sense, right? <clears throat> I mean, tomatoes are fruit. I have a feeling this is gonna be really, really juicy because this plastic wrapper is already, you see the condensation on it? The juice is already on the plastic wrapper itself. Gorgeous, gorgeous mochi. It's good. Not nearly as good as the tomato mochi. Oh, that tomato mochi is excellent. Man, that's surprising too. I really recommend that if you guys are ever around this area. I want one of my last meals in Japan to be another sitting of, of Wagyu beef because I know I'm gonna think about that big time after I leave. And it's really, really hard to get it in the US. Um, this place here, uh, right up there, it's supposed to be one of the best steakhouses in uh, Fukuoka. And they serve Miyazaki beef, which a lot of people claim is actually better than Kobe. And just to clear it up, Kobe is actually the most popular cut of Wagyu, but it may not be the best cut of Wagyu. So I'm gonna go there and see if I can get a seat. This is a really popular place, so I got here as soon as they open. Let me see if I can actually get in. I think it's this place here. They said I have to finish in an hour and 20 minutes. I can do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is what they recommended. And you can select uh, a cut of beef. And since this is my last Japanese wagon meal for a while, I'm going for broke here. Premium Miyazaki Gyu Filet. And I'm going for the 170 grams. So much attention to detail. Like he literally is cooking the vegetables and plating the vegetables like piece by piece. And all that care that's going into the tofu. This is my starter. Tofu with a corn, looks like corn sauce with puree. Asparagus with roll on top and Miyazaki beef. Started to taste Miyazaki beef for the first time. This is so beautifully intricate. And I'm just gonna one bite this. Wow, it's crunchy, it's gentle, it's briny, it's sweet all at the same time. That was a refined bite. My first taste of Miyazaki beef. It's in a curry. Oh, that is the craziest beef flavor. It's cooked in this curry, so it's not melty. That's 100% made up by just how beefy that meat is. And that was just a preview. And there's my half a lobster. Helping on fire to charge the meat a bit more. I think that's the lobster innards. Yep, look at that sucking lobster meat. Wow, it's juicy. Mmm, buttery sweet lobster right before a steak. Mm. That's like candy. Candy that's roasted above a tip time and scorched like three times from a blowtorch. The perfect thing to eat right before a buttery, melty piece of steak. There is my Miyazaki cut of beef. Comparing this to a masterpiece work of art, I don't think it's really going too far. Exquisite detail of the marbling. It's almost hypnotic. My steak is going on the tip on. You can actually kind of see the difference between the two sticks on the tip on right now. Um, the one on the right is the premium. The one on the left is, I think, one grade below. So you can see like there's more intricate marbling 
um, on the steak on the right. What he's doing now is sealing all the juice in. This is serious business. You can't be losing all that juice. That is glorious. The stir frying the fatty parts of the beef. I think that's gonna be cooked with the sprouts. That was horrible. You guys don't need to eat this. If anybody out there comes across Miyazaki steak, you know, it's not that good. Just, just give it to me, I'll take care of it for you. I'm trying to recall what it was like eating Kobe. I'm trying to compare it with the Miyazaki. This steak is just as buttery and melty as Kobe. With the salt. Nothing greater, no greater steak on earth than Wagyu. That buttery, melty flavor in every single bite, it's just you can't find that anywhere else. You go eat steak in the US and people say not in your mouth. Mm, nah, this. That completely melts in your mouth. I feel it's got more of a chew than Kobe, and I feel like it has a milder beef flavor. Like very, very gentle, almost caressing type of beef flavor. It's, it's very subtly beefy. It's weird. It's very subtly, it's more melty and buttery than, than beefy. Also, it's really fatty without being greasy at all. Like, you chew a piece of beef and it's melts in your mouth and then it's gone. You don't have the lingering kind of almost nasty greasiness in your mouth. It's, it's very clean, fatty flavor. I feel like my, my chopsticks might be bruising this beef. This thing is like the Pillsbury Doughboy of beef. I mean, is it better than Kobe? Honestly, I can't tell you unless I'm eating it side by side right now. The only thing I can tell you, this thing is making me really, really happy. That's all I can say. Bliss, blissful. That's how I feel every time I eat top quality wagyu here in Japan. I do love eating it Japan, Japanese style, some wasabi, soy sauce. I just gotta commit that last bite to memory because I won't be having something as good as that for a long, long time. Wow, you open the rice up in the middle, put some, I think some curry or some kind of sauce in there, and then the leftover beef just went into the fried rice. I just had some ridiculous um, home-cooked fried rice yesterday. This is like the exact opposite. It's super fancy, cooked in this awesome beef fat. Do I even need to tell you this is ridiculous? You can taste all that beefy flavor in every single grain of rice. Every single grain, it's like a little flavor pellet, beef flavor pellet. And this is the beef soup, by the way. That's beefy, that just makes you feel warm all over. There are little fatty pieces of beef in here as well, that as you're chewing, it's kind of melting with the rice in your mouth. That's the ultimate, and I mean ultimate beef fried rice. You can't leave one little piece out. This on ramen, would just be unbelievable. Every single thing I had today touched beef. And if you know how good that beef was, you want everything you need to touch it, you do. So the pieces of bread that our beef was sitting on is being squished, like completely flattened. And this is gonna be turned into a dessert item. So that thing is like almost turning into a toast cracker. Look at that. Just imagining like every single grain of that rice in my mouth and the little fatty pieces of beef just hugging it and caressing it and everything just melting together into this heavenly beefy bliss. I gotta move on. I do. My time has run out. So I don't know what's gonna happen now. I can I get I still I still have one more dish left. This is still pretty empty, so I think I should be okay. Dessert, again, toast that had the beef sitting on it. So basically the throne of the beef. It looks like creme brulee and some ice cream. This toast is after, oh, it is literally like a cracker now. Actually, how stupid, why'd I use a fork for that? It tastes like cinnamon toast.
can't really taste the beef on the toast, which is probably a good thing because this, this is dessert. But just knowing that my awesome beef once sat on this toast on the grill, that's all that matters. That's all I need. Right, I'm gonna eat up and get out of here because I'm about 15 minutes over the time limit. That was an amazing meal. The only bad thing is I felt really rushed. I was like checking on time. I didn't know what was gonna happen to me once the time allocated to me ran out. I didn't know if like dudes in black suit from the beef Yakuza was gonna come and kick me out. Anyway, there, there was pressure there is all I'm saying. Um, also, $200 for a steak meal, as delicious as it was, and it was delicious. I'm still kind of hungry. I don't know. Let's see what else is here. Monsonabe place. What a great meal. I mean, watch this. Watch the full video on Strictly Dumpling, but this was one of my all-time favorite dishes in Japan. Yeah, I feel kind of weird now because so much stomach is now in my stomach. But, oh, it's so good. Look at the bathroom here. First of all, they open the door for you and it looks like a hut. Bathroom slippers. Wow. I feel like I'm on a tropical island somewhere. Look at the key. It's like a cone, but it's a key. Huh. After some good beef intestine, now it's time to seek out some dessert. Take an ice cream. Let's go see what Baskin Robbins in Japan looks like. This umbrella, which looks so awesome, and looks like it belongs in an episode of Kenshin, costs around $200. Worth it though. Really pretty shopping center. I love that store, by the way. Tons of awesome Japanese stuff in there. Baskin Robbins, Japan. Oh, this is really colorful. I mean, it's like a unicorn threw up in here. Look at this, ooh. That's some cute stuff. Expect no less from Baskin Robbins in Japan. This lovely lady here handed me, handed me a, a sample. This is called Candy Box. It's got lemon and mango and all sorts of stuff. It's colorful. Oh, Candy Box. Oh, thank you. Yum. Oh, nice. Oh, what's the crispy stuff? <laughs> It's like a cereal in there or something. Mmm. That's good. Can I try the muskmelon? Muskmelon? Musk Thank you. I got some. Thank you. Mm. Oh yeah. Anything with melon in this country. Okay, I know what I know what I want. Um, can I get a muskmelon? <laughs> um hopping shower. Mmm, yummy. Love the muskmelon. I don't know why, but like, this is like McDonald's, Baskin Robbins. Why is it not nearly as good as the steaks? You don't get it. This is great. I love pop and shower. Has some good ice cream. I think that's it for me today. And that about wraps up my Japan trip. Got a really early flight in the morning, so I'm gonna go back to the hotel, go to bed. Good night, guys.